Welcome to the Word of His Kingdom. This, we have an exciting program for you today. Guests here today are evangelist Shinyere Ifecho, that has, always has a powerful word from God. Amen. <laughs> Doctor and pastor Lorella Meyer, who also always has a powerful word just for you. And my name is Prophetess Lorna Baldonado, and I believe that I have a powerful word for you. We also have with us beautiful psalmist, Virginia Snyder, that's going to bless us in an anointed song. And that anointing is going to bring in the presence of the Holy Spirit so that we may, as women of God, women of faith, begin to flow in the supernatural. So stay tuned. Just stand where you're at. We have an exciting program and word just for you. Amen. Virginia Snyder, she's the Register of End Time Ministries International Bible University. Do you have a word to say when school starts, Virginia? Uh, fall quarter will be beginning on September 8th. And we're looking forward to this year's teaching, the Anointed Word of God. We have many classes and anointed teachers, and it's very exciting. Okay, right uh, now I'm going to sing a little song for you. Okay. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Oh, Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear. Oh, Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear. And I will pour out my life at your feet. I will pour out my life at your feet as an offering of love and worship unto thee and i will pour out my life at your feet i will pour out my life at your feet as an offering of love and worship unto thee thank you so much virginia and uh, if you would like to be seated down there, you may, to watch the rest of the program. Would you like to do that? And we'll now turn it over to the host for today, and that is Prophetess Lorna. We're going to be talking today and discussing overcoming fear. Believe me in your life, you're going to have a chance to experience fear of some time in your life. Some people experience fear of failure, fear of a new thing, fear of stepping out, fears that you'll never be married, fears, some others have fears that they never will have children. Some fear everything that's happening in the world. But where did fear come from? Because when God created man, he created man perfect and upright, and he was to walk by faith. He wasn't to have fear. But what happened when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, 
it opened the door to fear. And we see it in the scriptures in the third chapter of Genesis where before they would love to walk in the garden with God. God would, they would hear the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden and they would have fellowship and it was a beautiful time and it was exciting. But when they listened to the serpent that had beguiled Eve and they ate of the wrong fruit, they disobeyed what God had told them to do, then it opened that door. And this one day, as they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, they hid themselves. And the Lord spoke to Adam, and he said, Adam, where are you? Now, you know that he knew where he was, but what was he saying? Adam, just where are you now in your life? What has happened? Where are you, Adam? And Adam said back to God, he said, I hid myself. Me and my wife hid ourselves from your presence because we were afraid. Now, they had not experienced fear before this time, but it walked in the glory of God. But now that sin had came in, the fall of man had came in, it opened the door for fears. But praise God, this is why we are all about on the word of his kingdom. Because we come to give you good news. And we come to tell you that God is a deliverer from fears. Even great men have fears. You know, Moses was called as a great prophet of God. He had a magnificent call on his life. And yet, even though he was called to lead a people out of Egypt, and he was called to stand before Pharaoh and do signs and wonders and miracles, and he was called to do many magnificent things. In fact, delivering a Hebrew once, trying to defend this Hebrew, he had slain this Egyptian. He was a fearless man, and yet, when God told him that he was going to lead this people and stand before Pharaoh, he said, who am I? Who am I? He said, I'm slow of speech. I'm slow of tongue. What was he saying? I can't speak well. I, I don't know how to speak. I'm not elegant. And yet, that was not really the truth because he had been raised up in Pharaoh's house as an Egyptian. He was well able. But the enemy will always attack you where you will begin to say, I can't do things. I'm not able. I have fear. But God, through this program today and through the word of God, is going to show how fear can be delivered that it has no place in the heart of a Christian. It didn't say fear wouldn't come. It did not say that fear would not come. But we do not have to stay in fear. Anyway, would you like to add something to that? That's awesome. We understand that fear, whatever there is fear, there is no faith. Faith and fear are no friends. God is faith. When we put our trust in God, we have faith in God, fear is far. Fear are those things that the enemy brings to magnify himself before us. And each time something bigger than yourself comes in front of you, you, get, you become intimidated. And that's why the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. He said, for God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. When you are afraid, you can never have sound judgment, sound mind. When you are intimidated, you find yourself locked up somewhere, and the enemy begins to prevail against you. 
we understand looking around us all over the nations all over the world things are happening that can make the heart of somebody shake and many people are beginning to get so cowed into a corner it is not the first time such a thing is happening we saw in the book of judges chapter 6 the time of gideon he was a mighty man of valor he was a man of power he was a warrior but a time came he found himself being intimidated by the things that come upon them and so he found himself in hiding so many of us are hiding at this time so many of us are being intimidated into believing not in what god has said concerning us we're losing our confidence confidence in the word of god confidence in our trust in god confidence in looking up to god confidence in the promises of god confidence confidence even in the vision that we carry mm -hmm. and i found in the book of revelation chapter 12 i mentioned it on my prayer line on thursday yes, night very good god was talking about the woman who was about who was pregnant with a vision the church is pregnant with a vision the church is pregnant with a purpose the church is pregnant with dreams we are all carrying something inside of us but there is one who was intimidated who was afraid of what the creation of God would do the man created in God's image would do when he comes he felt so intimidated and so afraid and that was why he set aside to do what to intimidate man to deceive man to bring man to his own dimension which is the dimension of fear he was somewhat a spirit of fear because he had lost his place and that's why I thank God for what my sister was saying, talking about sin. Sin brings us into fear. Right. And that was what the enemy tried to introduce to us because the moment he lost his place in heaven, he became a fearful one. Mm -hmm. He became one who was afraid. And as a result, he comes to introduce the same thing, insecurity that he has into our lives. And the moment you're insecure, you can hardly achieve anything. I'm standing to say that we are at a point in time coming to the end of the month the end of the eighth month we are about to step into another month the month of birth a woman who is pregnant will have a season of bringing forth which is the ninth month and so that is the most crucial time mm -hmm. of every woman when she begins to get into the seventh eighth month fear of the unknown grips the heart of the woman and she begins to have the fear of, will I bring forth? Will I die in this pregnancy? Will the baby die? Will there be a stillbirth? All kinds of whisperings of the enemy begins to come into the mind of the woman. And that is what is happening to all of us as God's children at this time. We are pregnant. We have come to a point of delivery. And the enemy is standing as he stood in, before in the book of, the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12. The Bible said, and the dragon came and stood positioned mm -hmm. himself before the woman who was pregnant why did he position himself to intimidate the woman to bring fear into the heart of the woman so we've come to say to you today you are pregnant with god's vision you are pregnant with god's mm -hmm. purpose you are pregnant with god's dreams the dream and what you carry inside of you does not belong to you it belongs to one who planted it and that one is the one who created all things. One who cannot be intimidated. And he's saying to you today that you should not be afraid. No matter what you see, because it's not what he planted inside of you. He's not giving you the seed and spirit of intimidation. He's not giving you the spirit of fear. But he's giving you the spirit of sound judgment. And that is to say Good. what you carry will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. That is so beautiful. And um, I'm reminded, dear women of God, that the word of the Lord tells us that men's hearts will be failing them for fear for the things that are coming to pass on the earth. And I have noticed over, over uh, the past 30 years how fear is being introduced to children, an unhealthy fear, such as I can remember that uh, my husband and I picked up some cartoon classics such as Porky Pig and, and uh, the Looney Tunes and Donald Duck and all the Disney characters that entertain children and, and, and those with childlike hearts for, for years and years and years. And then we begin to see a change and the devil actually moving into the toy box. 
cartoons began to become more violent. Uh, toys began to become more violent. And so we're seeing an, a tremendous, tremendous increase in violence because the enemy is out to intimidate man. And there's only one way that you can be free from the fear of death. The last enemy to be put down is the fear of death. And that is because Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. And we, for the Christian, and I want to share with you right now, do you have a fear of death? And I'm sure living in many countries, many people, the, the, the way the laws are and the way um, just different systems run, people are insecure just in their daily living. But Jesus Christ has come to give you life and hope. I can recall reading uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Uh, part of it is that these precious Christians, the early Christians, when Nero burned Rome, or just around 70 AD or, or close to in that area, that he blamed the Christians. And so the Christians went into the catacombs, and the sign of the fish was, a Christian is here. And so instead of being afraid, they embrace they're going to be with, with their Savior. They actually sang songs as they were put into the arena and dressed in lamb's clothes and here ferocious animals, lions and tigers were let out to kill these precious saints. But they were not afraid to die because they knew to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And I want you right now not to be afraid of death. I want you to look at Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of faith. He is the one. He is eternal. And there is no death for the Christian. There is no death, but you can embrace him and have a security that you know that you're going to be the, with the Lord. I want you to pray this prayer right now. Jesus Christ died on the cross for that fear, for that intimidation, for that heartache, for those sins. Just right now say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of every sin. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in your book of life. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done. You are freeing me from fear. I shall not fear what man shall do, for the Lord is my helper. In Jesus' name, amen. Prophetess Lorna. You know, another thing that fear comes to do is to intimidate you so that you don't know who you are. When you receive the Lord, you should know who you are. Now, there were 12 spies in the Bible, and they were told to go and spy out a land that God had already given them. He said, I've given you the land, just go spy it out. In other words, just, just go look it out because this is what I'm going to give you. But 10 of them, 10 of them had an evil report they went in and they said, oh, yes, the fruit is large, the land is great, but there's giants in the land. And they brought an evil report saying, we can't take this land. And they saw themselves as grasshoppers. And because they had this fear and they saw themselves as little bitty grasshoppers and they saw the rest of them as big giants, he said, they see us like little grasshoppers too. Well, did you know how you see yourself is how somebody else is going to see you? So if you have a low self-esteem because you've allowed fear, and maybe you grew up in a house, uh, maybe a situation, maybe you didn't have a mother or father in that house, maybe there was a lot of different situations and it wasn't just a perfect home, and maybe there were a lot of negative things spoken over your life. So even when you became a Christian, you didn't have a good a self-image as you should have. And you begin to see yourself with inabilities. And out of your mouth would say, I can't do that, and I'm weak, instead of confessing God's word. And so we can have that, those things coming up in our lives. But the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved, he said the anointing will destroy the yoke. And there is an anointing on this word today. 
that is going to go into your spirit. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul and the spirit, intimidation, fear. All these things come in the soulish realm. They came, come in the mind of man. They come in the eye gates of man, what we see, what we hear, the different uh, things that we see in our lives. But God said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, but there were two of the spies, Caleb and Joshua. They had another spirit. And they said, we're able to take, we're well able to take this mountain. And Caleb was 80 years old. He said, give me this mountain. Amen. Because, woo, he saw himself as a mighty man of God because he saw that God himself was with him. That God had given him a covenant that said, I will go with you. The inhabitants of the land will not destroy you. And I'm here talking to somebody today that you feel that the situation in your life is about to destroy you. But I prophesy to you today that you need to rise up. You need to rise yes. up and quit seeing yourself as a grasshopper. Quit seeing yourself in a pitiful light. But start seeing yourself as a giant in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we come from the tribe of Judah. It's a lioness. So God wants you to begin to see yourself as God sees you. He said, we're hid in him. And as you begin to see that, that intimidation and that other image has to go. Because God takes this word, but it has to go from your mind into your spirit until you can see yourself as the Lord Jesus Christ made you to be. He said, I'm making you over again. I'm giving you my mind and my thought life. Praise God. Because Joshua, when Joshua was called to go in the same place and cross over Jordan and take the land, Joshua had to meditate day and night on that word. But he went in where the spies should have went. Only Caleb and Joshua were pleasing to the Lord. And God wants to bring a great deliverance to you today and start seeing yourself as a precious, precious brother or sister in the Lord. If you're born again, see yourself as a son of the Most High God, a daughter of the Most High God, that you will see yourself in a new image. This is what the gospel of the kingdom is all about. Jesus came to give us his image, his likeness, and his power. Man. Would you like to add to that, Shinny Ray? Awesome. You know, knowing who you are in him is very important. I believe that is the key word. If you know Amen. who you are in Christ, yes. you will understand that his word is true. Mm -hmm. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. When you go through the fire, God is there with you. When you go through the storm, mm. God is there with you. Yes. In the wilderness, God is there with you. Very good. On the mountain, God is there with you. Amen. The God in the valley is the same God on your mountain top. Mm -hmm. The God you find on your crook ways is the same God in your night. That is the same God in your midnight, the same God in your morning hours. So God has never left us. And I believe that that's why a man like Daniel and his brother were, brothers were able to stand even in the face of death right. because they knew who they were in him. Amen. They knew who their God was, and they knew their God was a living God, the God who has the power and the authority to do all things, the God who has the final say. It's not about what anybody says or what is happening around you, but finally, it's all about what God says that will happen to you. And I sense in my spirit is somebody, you have been praying against the spirit of fear. I want you to know that fear is a spirit. And it grows in the womb just like the baby, the seed of a, of a woman grows in the womb of a woman. And the fear begins to grow until it comes to a point it comes forth and it, it, it's giving birth to. 
That's why you find people committing suicide. Yes. And you wonder why did somebody with so much money have to commit suicide? No, fear had been breeding mm -hmm. and growing inside without somebody terminating or aborting that spirit. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I say it's not just one person. Right. There are so many of you in that category. You have been going for prayers. You have been praying. You have been telling yourself, I don't know why I'm seeing so much afraid. I'm not just talking about being afraid in the dark but I'm talking about being afraid of everything oh you're so jumpy in the spirit I'm not talking about being afraid of the things that you see fear of the night fear of anything that the eyes of making I'm talking about the fear that intimidates you from within inside of you tonight I begin to rebuke you foul spirit of fear Amen. I command you let everything that represents fear in that life lose your grip and hold right now in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you today i command you to pack your bags and baggages out of that life out of that brother's life out of that sister's life i command your pregnancy right to be terminated begin to comfort in the name of jesus and i lose that brothers and lose that sister because the bible said he has not given you the spirit of fear he's giving you the spirit of love wherever there is love there is no fear hallelujah for love Perfect love. Cast out fear. Cast out fear. Yes. And right now, I ask that you begin to receive the love of God. Let that fear be cast out of you. Because the anointing to mm. break the yoke of fear is in the house tonight. And I demand that you are set free. You are loose from the fear of the dark, fear of the unknown, fear of the wicked one, fear of lack, fear of limitations, fear of struggle. There's somebody who has this sense of fear of death all around you. Hallelujah. You always believe you will not live long. This day, that fear it's is terminated. Your appointment with death is terminated. I don't care what you have been told, but today your deliverance is in the Hallelujah. house. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Powerful, powerful. Thank you, Jesus. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. That was very anointed, sister. All right. One of the things that I want to share with you I'm a living miracle. When I was a young woman, I'd gone through an accident, and it made me very, very fearful. I would stutter. I would run away from people. And God got a hold of my heart. Fear, when you're in fear, it's all about you. It's about what the enemy does. It's not about the Lord. It's not about other people. You're in a world of self. And so when... When the Lord Jesus, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. And I was afraid. I was so, I thought, maybe people will think I'm losing my mind. But there was something of his nature that began to start dealing with the fear in my life. I also was raised with a, a situation of a very intimidating stepfather, a very cruel stepfather, but praise God, later on, I lost that fear because God delivered me and I was able to lead him to the Lord. And, but fear so gripped me, I was afraid to speak. And here today, I am speaking to you. I'm speaking to millions. So who delivered me? The Lord Jesus Christ. He has not given you a spirit of fear and power and of love and a sound mind. And fear is in the heart of every child, there is a healthy fear, such as you don't want to uh, go in the wrong lane when you're driving. You don't want to go too near a cliff. God gives us a healthy fear. But the unhealthy fear comes from the enemy. And when it's all about self, when it's all about your problems, you're afraid, you're not, you don't look right, you're afraid people aren't going to accept you. If God accepts you, that's all that counts. And when you know that when you've come to the Lord with all of your heart, indeed, when you've come to the Lord with all of your heart, he's accepted you. You are accepted in the beloved. You are part of his family. And I am reminded in Ezekiel, I believe it's uh, chapter 16, of this little baby that was polluted in her, her own blood. It was a was a parable the Lord was talking about, prophesying through, through Ezekiel. And then the Lord passed by. And each one of us, 
We have our different cultures. And a lot of fear comes to intimidate us. And we are polluted in our own blood. And when Jesus Christ comes into our life, we're not bound by our culture. We become part of the family of God. And all, all nations who have a relationship with the Lord become our brothers and sisters. We're not intimidated because we're short or we're heavy set or we're dark or we're red or we're too white or we have too many freckles or we've got a spot on our nose. None of those things matter because the beautiful Jesus has come to live within us and to shine out of us. One of my very, very favorite psalms I'm going to read to you, and I want that to become part of your life. And here it is. It, the Lord, it's Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I do not have any more fear. God has allowed me to pray for world leaders because I have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the only fear we should have is the fear of the Lord, that he is awesome and he is wonderful and he does give boundaries for our own sake. Uh, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and fail. And many of us are afraid of disease, afraid. And recently I went through a two-week illness where all my strength totally disappeared. Fear tried to get a hold of me, but I said, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm not going to go there. The enemy comes upon our flesh in many, many different ways. But they will stumble and fall when faith arises. The Word of God also tells us what we are afraid of is a perverse faith. It's faith in the devil. What we are afraid of will come to pass. So we need to be careful of, of that. And this is why we need so much deliverance. Though a host, and like I said, the enemy is coming in with a host of demons. And one good book to read is The Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary Baxter. How he's let loose, and the book of Revelation explains that. He, the enemy is let loose, and he is intimidating worse than ever. Though a host should come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and to inquire of his beauty, uh, the beauty of the Lord, and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, and this is a time of great trouble, he'll hide you. A pavilion is, was a, like a hiding place, a quarters for, for soldiers. And that's what he is. He's our protector. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our high tower. And at that, I'm going to quit and turn it over to precious Lorna. You know, that's so beautiful because what she said was very powerful. It really touched me when she said, fear is perver perverted faith in what the devil can do, in what the adversary can do. Faith is what we receive from hearing the word of God and knowing what God can do. And so how do we get rid of these things? Because every day in life, you're going to have an opportunity at some time or another to experience fear. If it's not in your life, it may be in the life of someone else. So how do we deal with it? Because this is why we're here. How can we rid of it? And Evangelist was sharing earlier a very powerful scripture that we have not been given the spirit of fear. So when we understand that it is the spirit of a fear trying to hinder us, trying to stop us from doing whatever God has called you to do, that we can walk in, it said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. What is love? Love is knowing that God's power and that he loves you and that that word of God, he's ready to deliver you. He's not only a savior, he's a deliverer, he's a king of kings. 
So knowing the love of God that passes all knowledge, all wisdom, that you can know when you call upon the Lord that he will quicken that word to you and you can begin to speak it. And he said, and the sound mind. A sound mind is a mind that's complete because when the enemy comes to bring fear or the carnal mind comes to bring fear, it's like being in the waters, being in a storm where you're tossed to and fro. One minute you're believing, one, the next minute you're doubting. And the enemy comes to get you like on a wave going back and back and forth. But God said, I've given you a sound mind. I've given you my love. I haven't given you that spirit of fear. And I was thinking about the lame man. When Peter and John went up into the temple at the hour in prayer one day, they passed by this lame man many days. Many days this poor lame man was at the beautiful gate or gate beautiful, and Peter and John were walking by, and this man was asking alms. He was, that's how he made his living. They gave him money. But one day, I believe when Peter looked at him, he said, this is his day. I believe he saw something in this man, a discernment, a knowing that this was the day that God was going to do something supernatural. And on this particular day, the, the, he said to the man, look on us. And the man looked at them, Peter and John, expecting that they were going to give him some money. But he said to them, Peter saying to them, silver and gold, I have none. But such, come on somebody, mm -hmm. but such as I have, give I thee. This is what we have here today as women of God. What we have, we're willing to give to you. Amen. Because it's a word of the kingdom. It's a word of power. And so he got more than he even expected to get. He was expecting to get some money that would probably last him to the next day, but he was getting ready to get something that would last him the rest of his life. Amen. So when he began to say to him, and he took him, Peter took him by the hand, and he lifted him up, and he said, rise up. He said his ankle bones and his legs begin to receive strength. Now you have to remember, this man had never walked. He was crippled and lame in his mother's womb. Something had happened in this birth that he was born a cripple. So that means he had no muscles in his legs. There was nothing in the natural that would tell this man, you're able to stand. Wow. Because even when a person has had a stroke or a sickness and their muscles begin to draw up, there's no strength anymore. Nothing in the natural told this man that if he was lifted up, that he could stand on those legs that had never walked and those feet that had never stood. Wow. But there was something more powerful in the words of Peter. When Peter began to speak, I believe there was an anointing, an anointing on the word of God that went into this man's spirit. And I believe when he reached out his hand, it was like when Jesus reached out his hand to Peter, walking on the water, and I believe when he made contact with Peter's hand and he was lifted up, I believe the power, the virtue, and the strength that flowed through Peter from the Lord Jesus Christ flowed into his legs and into his feet, and he stood up. Now, this man could have said, I don't think I'm able to stand up. He could not allow doubt. He had to make contact, and when he contacted into the virtue of Jesus Christ, he made a connection. And that connection caused him to stand up, and it said he leaped up, praising God. And the Lord has given me a word for somebody today that Amen. it's time for you to take a leap of faith, a leap of faith out of the insecurities you've been walking in, a leap of faith out of the, the things that maybe... Maybe you had a bad marriage. Maybe he made you feel bad. Maybe she made you feel bad. It's time to take a leap of faith and say, I'm going all the way with the Lord. I am casting down every fear because God has delivered me through the word of every fear. And take that leap of faith and begin to walk in the kingdom. Maybe every single day when that fear tries to come, because it will come, but we have the knowledge, what to do with it. He said, casting down 
every imagination, every false image, because false images will come. False words will come. And you'll even hear things going on because the carnal mind will always argue with the spirit. But today there's an anointing for you to rise up and begin to walk in all the things that God has given you. Truly, today, there's an anointing in this studio, and I believe that many are going to come out of those things where fear has held you back. There's somebody mm -hmm. that God wants to step out and begin to do a ministry, and you've been waiting on the Lord. The Lord said today is the time, mm -hmm. and that as you begin to take this, fear is going to go the fear and the problem was you didn't have the finances. But God said, I will release those things when you rise up. When the man leaped up and began to praise God, he was made whole. Mm. And things were released in his life. You see, when God makes us whole, that's when he releases everything else into our life yeah. so that we can walk whole, leaping and praising God. That was his key to staying healed his key to his miracle as he began to praise God. I believe that man began to praise God for the rest of his life Amen. because of that mighty miracle. That's beautiful. beautiful. Uh, yeah. And I was just in my spirit meditating and talking with the Spirit of God. I say for those of you who are in war-torn countries, right. Those of you who are in nations that they be hid in the heads, cutting off the head of, heads of Christians. Yes. Those of you who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. For this is what is going on even in this hour. I believe that this word is an on-time word for you. Right. Right. I sense in my spirit that so many of you that are walking in this dimension at this time. And your fear has, fear has magnified itself, which is the fear of death. And it's intimidating. Some of you are at the point of giving up your faith. I speak to you, brother, sister, don't give up your faith. For the death is not an end to it. We, after death, will live. And the Bible says in Psalm 23, verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I want you to know that the word is coming from, from this place today is how to comfort you for the word of God is alive. That word is able to go into your heart. That word is able to go into your soul. That word is going to your spirit man right now. That word is cutting through the bones and the marrows. That word is removing every fear that has been intimidating you. That will cause you to sell or give up your faith. No matter what you're faced with. We have come to say to you today. Be strong and courageous. Because your God is with you. His rod is with you. His staff is with you. He's not left you alone. Daniel and his brothers were cast into that fire, into that furnace fire, furnace of fire. It was so heated up and so bad that it consumed the ones that were throwing them inside the fire. But I want you to know that there was a fourth man. No, God knows that you will come from where you are. God knows that you will come at this point and you will see what you're seeing. God knows that you will be the one that will face what you're facing. But God has not left you. God's grace is with you. God's comfort is with you. God's wrath is with you. God's spirit is with you. And we have come to strengthen you to say we stand with you in faith that God will deliver you from whatever that has come to intimidate you. Please don't give up your faith. Please don't give it up for there is life after now. There is eternal life. There is nothing here. We are living here. If you look around you know that the times are just winding down. So we are yes. encouraging you. For those of us who are being faced with persecutions for those of us who are being faced with dead threats, for those of us who have come to the point, we are just tired of running. We are tired of hoping. We are tired of fighting. But today, I say, for faith grows. Let your faith begin to grow. And for those of you who are so, you have so much fear of everything around you. You're not even in a war-torn area. But fear is just all over you. I come to say to you, Job said, that which I fear most has come upon me. Yes. And I want to say that fear is not a gift. 
It's a gift that the enemy gives to people. Right. Right. God does not give you the spirit of fear. So if you have that, it is you that will be able to say, today, this is no gift from God. I reject the gift of the enemy. It is no gift. Reject it today, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. You know, when we stop to look into the word of God, many of God's tremendous servants had fear. Jacob had a lot of fear in his heart because he had done his brother wrong. He manipulated because he, he loved God so much, but he tried in his own effort to serve God, and he was carrying this guilt inside of him. And so uh, God began to prosper. They, the, the, the two brothers separated in the word of the Lord. You can read this in Genesis uh, I believe, chapter 26, that uh, the two uh, boys separated and God began to actually prosper each, each boy. And, um, but the birthright, the honor that God bestowed was upon Jacob. And God was going to teach Jacob some lessons. He was afraid that his brother was going to kill him. And originally when he wronged his brother, the brother was going to kill him. But many years has passed. And now... They were actually passing each other, each being very prosperous, through the countryside. And it was heard, hey, your brother Esau's coming. And Jacob got afraid, and he, he took his, his uh, band of people, and, and uh, he said, in case one is totally killed, then the others can go ahead and carry my name. He was thinking man's thinking and forgetting about what God had told him. So anyhow, he began to... He began to submit to the Lord. He began to pray to the Lord. And that which he had taken from his brother, he was willing to give to his brother. And so uh, much gifts were given to Esau. Esau said, I don't want them. I embrace you, my brother. And I want to say, maybe you're afraid of relationships. Maybe you've had a, a strained relationship with your mother, your father, your children. And you're afraid to meet them. And many times when someone has hurt us, we walk clear uh, uh, around the other side of the room. God wants you to face that fear. And the Lord, in, when you are afraid, you do not, remember it's all about yourself. But when you forgive and when you open yourself up to restored relationships, fear will leave. And you will begin to see that person the way God sees them. God wants to restore relationships. And in the name of Jesus, Father, I speak restoration to many hurting brothers and sisters like Jacob for years have carried this hurt. That, uh, and even though it was Jacob's fault, and Father, even though it could be our fault, we confess that this is not right and we want to make it right and we want to see restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, it's been... Uh... A good time today being with you. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you and that the power of the living God has come into your house today. That you will take this word and apply it to your life because it's a word that will transform your life. If the Cross TV has been a blessing to you, please write and tell them if the word of his kingdom has been a blessing to you, please write in and, and tell us. Write in your prayer request. Amen. If you need prayer for healing, maybe you need prayer for your marriage, whatever you need prayer for, God is big enough to help you, and we will take those prayer requests. After the program, they'll give us those prayer requests. We take them very serious, and we will pray and come alongside of you till those prayers are answered. Because we believe in a big God, bigger than any problem, bigger than any fear. And we are here because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are here just for you. Pray for Cross TV. We're going into many nations, many nations and hurting people to bring the gospel of the good news. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. God bless you.